Hey there. No green screen for today. I'm taking a break. Playing some games. Arcade games in particular. I mean, here I'm playing Gunblade New York and LA Machine Guns Arcade Hits Pack. You know, during my time in education studying film and media, you get to analyze a lot, visually and audibly. Can my analysis skills be applied to video games? Absolutely. Now, I can talk about overall artistic choices in AAA games as much as I want, but I'm focusing on something that doesn't get recognized nowadays. You've seen the title, Arcade Attract Modes. Attract Modes, as the name implies, helps attract customers to play their games. Some Attract Modes just show gameplay, while others go the extra mile and create exclusive cutscenes, music and dialogue not seen in the actual game. Now these aren't long, you don't have much time to attract customers, especially in a loud establishment like the arcades. So how would you go about attracting people? I'm going to analyse three of these attract modes and say why I think they're effective. Let's begin. Sega's emergency call ambulance is a good example. Everything is very quick cut here. The situation feels intense, as it should be. Cutting to and from accidents, the ambulance, the word emergency, the paramedics in action, to multiple symptoms displayed over an electrocardiogram pulse. Too quick to read all of them. Looks overwhelming, but eventually it just cuts to one long take of the ambulance driving, as that's the priority here. Take a look at this shot. It freezes and does some cool matrix rotation to get a better angle on the area. Look at all these obstacles cluttering the frame. The ambulance is taking the tiniest shortcuts because every second counts, but they're so close to hitting someone. Well, you know what some people say, to save a life, you, you might need to take one in the process. In some scenes, the ambulance is driving around in pitch black under a spotlight. Why? The darkness represents the unknown. No scenario is the same. An ambulance will go to different places for different scenarios each time. Much like a journey, we don't know what lies ahead. Hence why we can't see what's ahead of the ambulance. Tiny brief shots of the patients themselves with a partner of some kind. They actually have a little personality here. They're not complete nobodies. It's like in TV intros that introduce main characters. That's the kind of main aesthetic I can get from this. The presentation of a TV show. The music sounds very action-packed for it as well. It's an aesthetic we can all understand because it's been in our lives growing up. Kids grow up saying I want to be a fireman because they watch Fireman Sam, or wanting to be a detective because they watch Inspector Gadget. And when they get older, they move on to live action like CSI and those Chicago series. The game feeds the desire for that heroic fantasy, which is why I think this attract mode is effective for attracting customers. Konami's Thrill Drive is an odd example. Admittedly, it's pretty much just gameplay, but I'm putting this in for presentation reasons. Some people compare this to Burnout because both games share a uniqueness to crashing. I'll occasionally hear that Thrill Drive was an inspiration to Burnout, but I don't know if that's true. When you think of aggressive driving games, racing or not, they're usually presented in a positive yet rebellious fashion. Tiny little details like scruffy, unaligned fonts to punk rock music are usually associated here, but Thrill Drive is nothing like that. The presentation here is dark, and if anything, discourages aggressive driving. There are people flying through windshields! Intertwined with the words warning, danger, collision and accident in red, basic colour connotations for red are clear here. The only thing missing is blood. The locations themselves aren't very saturated, a lot of cloud and not enough sunlight. Grey cumulonimbus clouds in particular, a chance of rain. Depressing? Or because there's a chance of rain, it further emphasises the danger as rain will make the driving conditions worse. The music doesn't sound very happy either. If I wanted to make an aggressive driving game, this just isn't the way I'd go about it. Take a look at Burnout. I suppose the appeal of causing insane crashes in Burnout is similar to the appeal of Thrill Drive, albeit it's done in a darker tongue. To describe the appeal more thoroughly, it's like the appeal of GTA. We wouldn't want to commit crimes, but it's okay if a fictional character is doing it for you. We don't want to cause real-life car crashes, but it's okay to do them in a simulated environment. While the cars don't do double backflip 540 spins on impact, causing a massive pile-up in the process, it's something. One of the first of its kind. I assumed it worked, because there were two sequels to this, and they're presented in the exact same way. Drive 3. 
The last game I'll touch on is Namco's Tokyo Wars, one I've actually played in the arcades. The intro cross cuts between white tanks moving into defensive positions while green tanks slowly emerge from a bridge. The camera is zoomed in slightly. The more a camera is zoomed in, the more objects can cluster the frame. Not sure if claustrophobic is the right word to use, but when objects clutter a zoomed frame, you can't see the spaces in between objects as well. They look too close together, feels uncomfortable. The frame is cluttered over time because it's an endless line of tanks. Furthermore, the zoom itself creates a low field of view. Now when you play games with a high field of view, moving towards objects feels faster than it should do. Here, because it's lower, the tanks approach the camera slower, but since it's anticipated, it feels more like an impending doom. As soon as the leading tank gets close, the ground shakes like we're really there. We can't move, so we're definitely going to get crushed by one of them. It's like we have the point of view of a helpless civilian in the middle of this hectic battle. To support this theory, there's a previous shaky shot of green tanks passing by. It reminds me of news footage seeing things through the lens of a camera, so people are down there in the battlefield. Also, it plays at 60fps to have that real-life motion to it. Despite the gameplay being very arcadey, the presentation is very tense. I felt like I was part of something really important, something that could make a difference. The heavy beat of the music and the early build-up of tension really helps here. To top all of this off, overthinking the scenario makes it a lot scarier than it should be. Tokyo is one of the largest cities in the world, home to 37 million residents as of 2020. It's also one of the largest urban economies in the world. Imagine all of this destroyed in a tank battle. Think about how that will affect not only Japan but the rest of the world. The two sides are identified as green and white forces, but research suggests that they're similar to Japanese Type 90s and Soviet T-72s. So yes, one can argue this is Japan versus Russia. Both are not far off in population. But the dooming historical fact is that only 341 Type 90s were produced throughout its production history, while there are over 42,000 T-72s. So unless Japan has overseas support, in a tank battle, Japan were outnumbered from the very start. But this is set in 1990X, an unpredictable year for an unpredictable future. I guess anything can happen. And there you have it. Three attract modes that can get people's attention. A piece of media nobody really talks about nowadays. I mean, any piece of media can be analyzed, sometimes too much. Take the film poster for Jaws. Is the shark a phallus? Some people might think that. I presume most of you watching have played arcade games, hopefully all of you. How were you attracted to these games? Was it the visuals, the action, the soundtrack, or something else? Tell me in the comments. Oh, in case you were wondering, since I said I've played Tokyo Wars before, as of a few years ago, you can find one at Felix Stowe Pier. And if you'd like to play it authentically, you should stop watching this video and actually go outside the house, like in real life. Maybe these lockdown restrictions will tone down when this video comes out. And with that being said, I'm out of here.